starting to get into the technical side of things now and it, it is quite intriguing. don't really know much about radar but I've learnt some things today. Friends. The N001 Pulse Droppler Radar and the OLS27 Infrared Search and Track System, the Erst. Threat, no threat. No special buttons required. Interesting. That is interesting. Okay. In this lesson, we will discuss the two sensors of the SU-27, the N001 Pulse Doppler Radar and the OLS-27 Infrared Search and Track System, or ERST. Let's first talk about the radar. The N001 is a look-down shoot-down radar that can detect and track up to 24 fighter-sized targets 10 to 100 kilometers in the front hemisphere and 30 to 40 kilometers in the rear hemisphere. Let's first enable the Beyond Visual Range Master Mode by pressing 2. Right, I knew there'd be keys that we need to bind. So we need to uh, bind that to something. Now I'm thinking this is more an air-to-air -air thing. I may have to do this for both Mode 1 and Mode 3 to ground and air-to-air. -air. We'll see. Keep forgetting to switch that back, don't I? Okay, so... We're going to go for mode two, uh, mode one rather. Now, okay, so this button I'm thinking should probably still be cannons because cannons can be used in the air as well as on the ground. Save and activate. Now, you said button two. So I'm thinking it's going to be one of the uh, MDFs. MFDs. In this lesson, we will discuss the two sensors of the SU-27, the N001 Pulse Doppler Radar and the OLS-27 Infrared Search and Track System. It's called Beyond Visual Range. So let's search for that. Beyond, keyboard button 2, MFD1, okay. Or Erst. Let's first talk about the radar. The N001 is a look-down shoot-down radar that can detect and track up to 24 fighter-sized targets 10 to 100 kilometers in the front hemisphere and 30 to 40 kilometers in the rear hemisphere. Let's first enable the Beyond Visual Range Master Mode by pressing 2. Next, we'll turn on the radar by pressing the I key. So now I need to bind something to the I key. Search radar. Okay, so we turn radar on and off. Alrighty, turn it on. We now have some new symbology on the HUD in the heads down display or HDD. To change the range scale, press equal to decrease range and press minus to increase range. Oh, boy. You can see the range scale at the top of the vertical bar on the left side of the HUD. So equal and minus, oh, okay, so radar on off then, it's going to go back to this, RWS, TWS swap, it's going to be this, ah, I can't find this button, increase. There we go. It is right control and plus equals. It doesn't say right control. Is it maybe this? Uh, not this. Uh, it's got to be this one. This can range from 5 to 500 kilometers. This is also reflected on the HDD. The arc on the HDD indicates the radar's detection range. In the bottom left corner of the hood, 
SCN BVR is displayed to indicate that you're in beyond visual range scan mode. I've added a friendly aircraft heading towards you to practice adjusting the range scale and seeing the changes on the HUD and HDD. A friendly aircraft is indicated as a double row of dashed lines on the HUD. A large aircraft That's has not four right. dashes per line. That's it there. It's that one. So, okay, let's go back in. Search for that. Doesn't come up at all. What about that one? Uh, sensors. That's display zoom in. <clears throat> that's it. That's the one. Wow, that took some finding. So is that it? Just that little person popping up. That's my indication. Very cool, I must say. Below the range scale indication on the HUD is the radar PRF setting. PRF stands for Pulse Repetition Frequency. It can either be high PRF or medium PRF. High PRF is best for high closure targets and medium PRF is best for medium or low closure targets. High PRF has the longest detection range but is most effective when you and the target are flying towards each other. In addition to high and medium PRF, you also have interleave that alternates high and medium PRF. Interleave mode is best used when the aspect of the target is unknown. You can cycle between the three PRF settings by pressing right shift and I. I've added two friendly aircraft, one coming towards you and one flying away. Practice adjusting your PRF and note how different PRF settings will detect different targets. Press right shift and I. Okay, PRF. Oh, I see it changing there. I don't know what any of that says. ABT, NNC, 3NC. So we lose him. Get him back. And then I press it again, we should lose him again. Okay, that's interesting. That's going to take some working out. But I can track him with two types, but not this type. Okay. And what if I change the range to 500? really interesting starting to get into the technical side of things now and it, it is quite intriguing don't really know much about radar but I've learned some things today so we've actually got two we're picking up two there with uh, NNC the three NC we only pick up the first one and with ABT we pick up both So we're actually picking up both We're actually picking up at least one no matter which radar setting we have. That is interesting. That is interesting. I quite like that. Okay. During most missions, you will not be lucky enough to have targets always flying at your same altitude. Use the antenna elevation control though. You can steer the antenna to search above and below you. Press right shift and semicolon to raise the antenna, and press right shift and period to lower the antenna. While on the right side of the HUD is a vertical line with two horizontal marks near the center. These represent the antenna's centered elevation point. 
To the right of this is a small vertical bar and number that indicates the antenna elevation angle in degrees. Okay. Uh... Okay, so I'm going to change this. I've added two aircraft coming towards you, one below you and one above. Adjust the antenna elevation to detect both aircraft. Once you have located both aircraft, press the spacebar to continue. You can see there on the right hand side of the HUD by the 60, 9, 90, 10, 60 below it, you've got a 15. As I bring it down, then that's the elevation. So now it's minus 15. I'm assuming that's the degrees. So we'll swap the radar type. And then scan. Up and down. A bit manual, isn't it? Uh, let me think here. See a MiG-31 up, up to my right and down below, MiG-31. I'm not sure I'm picking them up on the sensor though. Well, maybe I am. Uh, how do we change the type again? That's something I think I'm going to have to spend a bit of time working out. Between the bottoms of the two vertical lines on the HUD is a horizontal line that indicates the azimuth steering of the radar antenna. It only has three possible settings, centered, right, and left. Move the antenna azimuth to the left by pressing right shift and comma, and move to the right by pressing right shift and slash. The horizontal bar indicates the antenna's current azimuth setting. It is important to note the radar contacts displayed in the HUD and HDD are according to the center of the scan, not necessarily centered off the nose of the aircraft. Gotcha. Once you have steered the antenna to place at least one contact in the center of the HUD and HDD, press the space bar. Right. So we're going to need more controls. Oh, I can't move this, that's frustrating. Right shift and comma. Oh, that's cool. That works. Oh, there we go. 25 miles off to my left somewhere. I've gone too low. I don't see him exactly, but he's over there. There he is. Okay, that works. And there's another one over there. Look. Oh, perfect. I see what they were doing. So if I now go to the right, I should pick him up as well. All right, we are learning. Nothing in the middle. So interesting. Because I don't have a target, I don't know what this does. Oh, hang on. Yeah, I see at the bottom of the HUD. It's changing the predicted something or other. Predicted target distance. Oh, okay, so if he pops up on the radar, and I think it's about 25. So let's say I set the radar to 100, and he's halfway between it. And I can set this up to 50? Yeah, I can. And then that would be my predicted range. Okay, we'll go with that. Those are the basics of using the radar in search mode. Now let's take a look at using the Erst in search mode. Press O to enable the Erst. Holy cow, more stuff. Erst. What am I going to bind for Erst? 
so many buttons now. But this whole side doesn't do anything. Maybe we can bind this one to Erst. So that's beyond visual range mode. We need to have a close air combat vertical scan. Oh, there's all sorts of different close air combat modes. Hmm. Right, so I'm pressing O to enable the Erst mode. Electro optical system. I think whatever I bind this to, I'm going to end up changing it. We'll see. The Erst is a passive system, so it will not alert other aircraft when you're tracking them. However, it tracks the thermal signature of the target, so it can detect targets easier if they're flying away from you because the sensor can clearly detect the hot engines of the target. The target and afterburner will also be easier for the Erst to detect. I've activated a couple of targets ahead of you at the same range. Note that you can only detect one of them because one is flying towards you and the other away. Also note that the Earth cannot tell friend from foe. As such, all contacts appear as hostile. Press the spacebar to continue. But at this moment in time, I cannot see anybody. This concludes this lesson on the beyond visual range scan mode. Okay, well that was a bit of a crash course, but lots of good beginning things there. I see him. I got him. Too high. So he is four, four miles, four clicks. Wow. 